Rexa versus Morgul. Let the hunt begin. I've been seeing so much even shaman recently. So I'm probably going to assume it's that. Well, I don't think that really affects my mulligan. Looks like a 1 through 4 curve, if you ask me. There's the 2 drop. He's not even shaman, by the way, so this is probably just tempo shaman. Because regular Shutterwalk doesn't play Firefly. Shoot that with an arcane shot. Don't really see much reason to do that. If he goes into my Mecharu, then my Joey bot can go back in. Blowing up my lost spirit here doesn't seem that appealing. Probably just want to go Chang Gang. Lines up pretty nicely against his board. Next turn, I'm likely to just cube this egg. Life Drinker. That's weird. Life Drinker and Firefly. So if I shoot my Lost Spirit here, I have a 3, 2, 3. I can trade off the whole board if I do that. Do I want to trade off the whole board? I can just play cube, probably gets hexed, but hex takes up most of his turn, I get a 5-5 five, five out of it. 5-5 five, five is nice into the Tar Creeper. I think I like this. Alright. I feel like he probably should have gone Kaliseth plus Tar Creeper into this to deny this trade. But I'm sure he spent more time thinking about it than I did. I can strap the spider bomb on here to get through this guy. Or I could just play Cheng Gang. The Cheng Gang's a little weak against Lightning Storm. I wonder. I mean I guess the spirit bomb or the spider bomb kind of is too. But that's fine. The Chain Gang's always good in this matchup because I can just play it as, you know, four mana for two, two, three taunts. The Spider Bomb's really just not that good against his deck. Alright, so there's a roll here and a roll here. I thought my Spider Bomb just went face for a second. I was like, what the fuck? Alright, I have a Necromechanic Lost Spirit Arcane Shot combo for next turn. Eh, I can just go Necromechanic and get a bunch of Devil Sore Eggs here. That seems pretty good. And there's a pretty good chance the 3 6 survives. He pretty much needs Hex for it to not also risk popping eggs. Alright, this looks like a Lost Spirit Arcane Shot. Or a Deathstalker Rexar. If I go Spirit Shot, I can trade off, like this can one shot, trade off two eggs. That fills my board with Devil Sores, I can take some value trades. This just seems so good. Am I value trading at all, or am I getting this hot four face damage? Trading is probably better against Hagatha, I guess. Kill Searing Totem instead of the Flame Elemental, because I don't see the stats on this thing mattering, like the one extra health, and killing the Searing Totem makes it less likely it's spell damage. Warriors of the frozen wastes. 
All right, let's see. Looks like no, he can kill the necro mechanic, and then I don't have lethal on board. Another egg. All right, so I can go pop both eggs, send in a double sword. I have seventeen. Set him to five. I could avoid popping both eggs, that way I'm better off against maybe like Electra Storm. Like instead of popping both eggs, I could go Deathstalker Rexar instead of one of the eggs. Kind of like my hero power though. I think this is fine. Then I can even throw down another egg to play around AoE. I really don't know what he could have here. Maybe Electra Volcano? But that's not even enough, is it? That's really weird. He's playing two Fireflies and Lich King and Giggling Inventor, but he's also playing Life Drinkers. Maybe he's just like Tempo Shutterwalk with the Life Drinker and Grumble backup plan. I think I just keep Houndmaster Shaw. I'm pretty sure it's the best card in my deck. Didn't really hit my aggressive curve that I was going for. Do I want to like coin out a Handmaster Shaw? Sure, Handmaster Shaw is cool. He hits for three. And there's a very good chance I draw a playable next turn. Play a lot of playables. I feel kind of weird playing this here when I have a Carnivorous Cube in my hand, but I think I can get away with it. I'm planning to go Cube on this next turn and then turn 6 is Necromechanic play dead. I feel like I have enough value out of the cube. Damn. Kind of throws off my whole plan. Maybe I cube plated this? It's just a decent sized minion. Alright, so I should usually have a Necro Mechanic on the board from here on out. I might even have six of them next turn. With the Ironwood Golems, it's kind of a toss-up between Togwaggle and Taunt Druid. Dark Creeper usually means Taunt Druid, so no Spreading Plague. Is he gonna kill this? Okay. Get another big cube in play. So I have 16, 18, 21, I think. 10, 16, 18, 21. I mean, I probably just hit him for a bunch, right? The ultimate infestation is actually kind of fishy, now that I think about it. 
Taunt Druid doesn't play that, but other Druid decks don't really play Tar Creeper. Let's just make a couple 3-6s. It's not optimal value, but whatever. One mana for double 3-6. Wow, he's just ultimate infestation taunt druid. Well, even if he gets too many taunts, I have the arcane shot hero power since he didn't leave himself uh, mana to armor up. It's kind of interesting that there's 14 minions on board and the final turn doesn't involve minion combat. Keep some minions to go on the board. I don't hate it. I don't really want to play a Mecharu into that, do I? Maybe I coin my Egg Napper next turn to trade with it. Alright, I kind of played the Terror Skill Stalker to have like a slightly better trade against this guy, but I might need the cube value in this matchup. I probably do, in fact. Engaging TC into dislocator. Chain Gang doesn't trade that well into the MC tech, but this guy can clean up, hopefully. Good old Joey bot. Alright, so I sent a 2-1 into that instead of a 1-1. No big deal. Um, I guess I play Giggling Inventor here. It's not really that good into Super Collider, but the rest of my options are also terrible. I feel like I need more value with this cube against Warrior. I think I just can't really do much here. Position this so that the Inoitron can't kill the Whirly Glider. Flarkin. AoE my board, I dare ya. I just silenced a goblin bomb. This card is so much shittier than Earthen Ring Farseer. Oh, okay. I can Lost Spirit double play dead here. It's not really great play dead value for the matchup, but maybe that's fine. Bust through here with seven power. Two bombs kill this. I get to push eight face damage. That's really not that much. I do force him to have an AoE here, but if he has the AoE, I get wrecked. I think I'm just going to pass. He's cleaning up all my bombs. Maybe I missed my opportunity. I 
want to cube this. I don't know if it's smart, but it seems fun. And then next turn, I can go like Umbra, Play Dead, and then get the Lost Spirits and they buff everything. That's gonna be sick. He keeps killing all my stuff though, it's so rude. But now I can go Umbra double play dead. Or maybe I'm supposed to go Umbra cube my cube. I can kill the 3-6, Umbra cube the cube, I have two or six minions. This cube has more cubes in it, which is powerful. But if he has AoE, he can pop it. I guess I can Umbra play dead and then cube. Let's go Umbra play dead and see what, how the board looks. This cube has nothing in it, this one has two carnivorous cubes. Maybe I could have positioned this guy better so there wasn't a chance he dies to Super Collider here. I guess he's even guaranteed dead to Super Collider because of the hero power. I don't know, this turn seemed kind of shitty if he has AoE. It's so cool though if he doesn't have AoE, just look at all the things I did. Look, he's targeting this, no AoE, easy. I have two death rattle activators here. So I can go like terror scale, play dead. This will have six attack, and then so I get three buffs on all five of these guys. That itself is 15, 20, 25, 30, 38. I think I'm one off here because he'll lifesteal off this. Oh, I did the math wrong. Okay, he died. I don't actually think the way I played that game is very good. But somehow in the top, like, half of his deck he drew zero brawls, zero reckless flurries. Okay, let's talk about some of the changes I made to the deck. I think the most important change is that I cut out a lot of the top end. I was playing a Boomzooka, a Katharina, and three big beasts combo with both of those cards. Obviously the Katharina is powerful when you draw her. The Boomzooka is reasonably powerful, but it does have some stinkers in the deck like the Giggling Inventors and the Chang Gangs. So it's pretty inconsistent, but even if it just hit like one Violet Worm and some stinkers, it was pretty decent. But it turns out that in some games you actually draw Violet Worm, or you actually draw Savannah High Main, and then you have to spend like six or eight mana playing one of those garbage minions, and you don't really want to do that. So top end felt clunky, cut all that top end out and just play a 1 of Deathstalker Rexar, which just does the same job but pretty much just better. I also cut the two copies of Loot Hoarder because I didn't feel like they were aggressive enough, and I cut one Unleash the Hounds because this doesn't really feel like an Unleash the Hounds meta. So with all that space we were able to play some more early game. We got two copies of Mecharoo, two copies of Whirly Glider, two copies of Eggnapper. Basically just cheap stuff, sticks on the board, and in a pinch it does have death rattle synergy with the like terror skill stalker, or even just like throw down a mecharoo alongside a spirit singer umbra or something. Cheap swarmy dudes with death rattles basically. I'm also playing a one of spider bomb, turns out it's just a pretty good card when you're playing two terror skill stalkers and a couple copies of play dead. But I think the most important change I made was adding the carnivorous cubes. 
Basically, if you're playing two copies of Play Dead, you're just an idiot if you're not playing two copies of Carnivorous Cube. I was trying to keep the deck away from being like a standard Death Rattle Hunter list, but no, that's just dumb. Put in Carnivorous Cube because it's a good card when you can proc its Death Rattle for one mana. And obviously this is like one of the most powerful Death Rattles in the game. If you get it twice with Necromechanic, that's just dirty. So yeah, Carnivorous Cube, good card. Overall, with both versions of the deck, I went 17 and 20 which is a 46% win rate, but this final version I'm showing right here went 4 and 1. Obviously kind of a low sample size, but with the Carnivorous Cubes and a stronger early game, less big clunky idiots, the deck did feel quite a bit better. And it can't be that bad, because at this point it's not that much different from a more standard Death Rattle Hunter list. And I think comparing this to a more standard Death Rattle Hunter is appropriate. So the question becomes... Basically, is Lost Spirit stronger than Kaliseth? Kind of questionable. It can definitely do some dirty stuff and burst for a ton of damage, but how often does a deck like Death Rattle Hunter really need the burst? I'm pretty skeptical of this list's power compared to the Kaliseth version, but you get to play some pretty underused cards, so that's always fun, right? <laughs>